Okay, so to achieve an illustration like this, um, I simply start off with a few basic things. And uh, that's what I'm going to show you in this tutorial. This is basically constructing a template. Now a template is what I would call, well I call it a template. Basically if you go online or you go into any kind of lingerie magazine, you'll find pretty much scantily clad women. Now that's great because you can see their body shape, um, you've also got a great number of different poses, it's wonderful. Now, I can't draw freehand to save my life, I trace everything. Look, I'm not an artist, I'm a designer, I don't have time to piss around learning how to draw. So basically what I'll do is I will go into um, a magazine, I'll download a picture like this, and I'll then print it out from my computer, I'll get a piece of tracing paper, lay it over the top of it, possibly I will blow this image up to A3 size or whatever just to help me get a bit more detail on my illustration. So I'll print this image off in A3, I'll then trace it uh, using tracing paper and a pencil or a pen, whatever you want to, and I'm just literally going around the outline of this lady's figure uh, and possibly some details like maybe the bust and also um, sort of like the armpit and places like this, just, just to kind of make it look more like a figure. Now, as you can probably see, I haven't done a face. The reason why I haven't done a face is because there is not enough detail in that initial image of her facial features to get a good tracing of her face. By that, what I mean is because we start off with a, an image that is basically from head to toe, and of course it's, a, it's on the internet or it's a print from a magazine, the resolution is going to be great when it comes to drawing the outline of her figure but if we then zoom in to her face it's going to be very pixelated and it's not going to be very easy to pick up those kind of details like the eye and the pupil and the eyebrow and things like this. So what I would then do next is go to let's say another magazine, um, a hair magazine or whatever and find a face that would kind of fit that body. It's a bit Frankenstein, you're kind of copying, cutting and pasting these two things together. And I'll then do a blow that face up to A3, and there'll be a lot more clarity in that image. And I'll then literally start to trace off her face and her features. Now, this is completely up to you in terms of how graphic and how cool you want it to be. Okay, look, my battery's dying, so we'll pick this up in a minute. So, the idea is we have a body, we've traced it off, we've then got a head, we've blown it up, trace it off, and now we're going to marry these two things together. Okay? Okay, so this is the image that we've now scanned in. We traced it off, we've now scanned it into Photoshop. I'm now literally just going to select the area and just note that there is no head on this and the reason why is because we can draw our head separately and uh, import that in exactly the same way into Illustrator. So I'm just going to copy this and then we're going to take it into Illustrator. And you can see we've already done one. Let's go to New Document. Okay. Just going to paste that in there. Just going to extend it or expand the size, and I'm going to lock it, which is Control 2. Once again, as I said, you need to know the basics of Illustrator for you to actually start doing this tutorial. Uh, there is a link posted with this blog. So now I have my um, outline. Now, the reason why we have this outline drawn first is because there's a lot of information in the original um, JPEG or photograph that we basically printed off. And so this just gives us a nice clean outline that we can now trace in Illustrator. So using the pen tool, I'm just going to simply go around and trace the lines that I originally drew with my pencil. Also make sure, so it's easier, that you have a line colour and no fill. I'm going to use red for my line colour and I'm not going to have a fill. And I'm just literally going to go around this whole thing and trace it off. Okay, and I'll show you the result of that in a second. Okay, and here you can see our face illustration. It's not done beautifully well, but it's quite quick. Considering we're going to shrink it down, it'll look better when it's smaller. Uh, and this is like an A4 page, so obviously it's dramatically larger than our body. Our body would pretty much sit next to it and be the same kind of height. So uh, actually it's a JPEG. I've just scanned it in into Photoshop and now imported it into Illustrator. Um, just either by copying and pasting, or you can save the file as a Photoshop file and then open it from Illustrator using File Open, uh, Yeah, for example. So this, we're not actually going to trace this because this will take absolutely ages and also I like the kind of, kind of graphic aspect of it, in other words it's kind of hand drawn, it's not perfect. So there is a wonderful tool in Illustrator you can use which is called Live Trace and what Live Trace does is it converts raster images into tracing objects. What that means is it converts JPEGs or black and white, specifically black and white, not specifically, but it, it works better or for our purposes today it converts black and white graphic images such as this into um, basically the paths or the you see here we have these little paths here it basically converts it into lots of different paths okay which then means we can basically edit it or play around with it or whatever you want to do it also means that when we zoom in on this image here 
it will become. Uh, I'll trace it. <laughs> okay, when we zoom in on this image, it will become pixelated and bitty. Okay, just like that. But if it's converted to a vector, basically that won't happen. Uh, it's important for the future, but for now it's not such a big deal. So I'm just going to click on this image and hit live trace. And you might get this message here because the file size is big. Um, doesn't matter. Yes. This might take a bit of time depending on the speed of your computer. Uh, mine's not too bad. Uh, come on. Okay, so now it's a vector image or it's been traced. So no matter how far I zoom in, it is never ever going to uh, pixelate, which is fantastic. However, we still cannot edit this. It's still kind of like a flat format. So if you click expand just here, what happens is you get all these little points. Now this is a pure vector image. Okay, you see that I can now select different aspects, different parts of this image. Uh, the parts that I can actually select are based on if they're closed units. In other words, let me just zoom in here. If you see this piece here, it's actually enclosed by a thick black line. Okay, that means that image or that part is basically a selectable, a selectable item. If, however, I select this bit here, this part is open, in other words, it's not fully enclosed by black lines, so it floods into the face. So when you do your illustrations, it's a good idea to remember this thing, um, remember this kind of concept, so that you can basically put a fill line here. So that means your hair would be, you know, you could select it and create a different color rather than the face, if that kind of makes sense. Anyway, we'll come to that in the future. So now we have our vector image, which is fantastic. You know what, if uh, I could always sort of like, if I wanted to put in a bit of gray here, I want to have grey hair, for example. So there's things you can do to it before you put it into your image. So I'm just going to literally uh, take this face, just copy it, and I'm going to paste it into our document, which you just saw us tracing off. Okay, I'm just going to place that there. So this is basically the finished result of me tracing around that illustration we imported into Photoshop. Okay, and uh, as you can see, it's kind of like lots of broken outlines or it can be one outline it's not really a, a big deal at this point in time okay and as you can see the face next to it is absolutely huge so what I'm going to do is literally just going to zoom out I'm going to shrink this down now if you you see basically if you want to free transform it you can do that however you're never going to be sure if the proportion is going to remain the same so if you hold down the shift key it locks it so it now um, transforms I don't know, in its original shape let's say so I'm now going to bring this over to the top of the body and I'm now going to shrink it down so that it kind of fits the proportions of the body. Okay, that might be a bit too small, but we can always have a look and play around with it. Okay, uh, let's just move that over. Maybe it needs to be a little bit bigger. She's got quite wide shoulders. Maybe a little bit smaller. So you can play around with it. You can also right click, transform. You can reflect this. So if you want to go in the other way, that's a bit strange to go back the other way. So there's lots of ways you can do this. You can even maybe shrink it a little bit in if you feel that she's got quite a wide face. Okay, I'm just going to literally position this where I feel it should go. And you can play around with this. I'm doing this quite quickly and I'm just going to literally move. You see how that neck point there? Originally it was back down the bottom. I'm just going to move this up so it connects with the face. So now we have a template, a perfect pristine template, which we can now save. We can now print this off as many times as you like and start to construct our garments on top of this, this image. However, to make it even easier for you, we're going to um, make this almost transparent, so it's very, very, very faint. That way, um, you don't, it's not going to confuse you when you start to draw your, your kind of garments on top of it. And the way we do this is very simple. Um, I'm literally going to control A, I'm going to select everything. I'm then going to go to my brushes palette over here, no I'm not, I'm going to go to my line palette over here and then if you see the third tab along says transparency. I'm now going to take this down to about 10 and then click off and now you can see it's very very faint, okay, almost, almost invisible. So now we have this perfect template, so when I print this off it'll be such a faint image you won't be able to, well you'll be able to barely see it, which means now we can start draw our clothes over the top of this template. And you can do this whole process, what we've done in this tutorial, for lots and lots of different um, poses, models, different faces. You know, you can even drag in a face from, let's say you, you draw six different faces, you can use the same body and drag in different faces. As long as you connect the necks up and it looks, it looks realistic, it's absolutely fine. So you now have a kind of resource that allows you to create 
huge amounts of templates that allow you to draw 200, even 300 designs very, very quickly, and they will be proportionate to the female body, so when it comes to actually pattern cutting or making these clothes, you will have a good idea of where the hemline will be on the body, you know, or where the, the sleeve will come to, or what kind of distance the, the high shoulder point is to the, the neck drop or whatever. Um, which makes it much easier than using a stylized drawing where the, the limbs are just ridiculously long and the, the waist is just so narrow it's, it's almost impossible to, to kind of create a garment like that. So this gives you a kind of realistic representation of the female form that you can produce over and over and over and over again and draw very quickly, very fluidly on top of. It will also help us later when we start to illustrate our clothes that we've drawn on top of these templates in Illustrator and start to colour them in and put texture and gradients and colours into them. Okay. So please kind of like check out the next tutorial and see how you feel. Okay, cheers.